Hello to everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Ivan Hammerhead, a nutritional biologist specialized in anti-aging medicine and functional medicine. Today we are going to talk about a class of peptides that are known as thymic peptides. Why thymic peptides? Because simply they are produced uh, by the thymus for differentiation, proliferation and migration of immune cells. Actually there are two types of thymic peptides. The first is uh, thymulin and the second is thymosin 1-alpha. So today we are going to talk about only one because the function is quite the same. Both of these peptides can increase and induce proliferation, differentiation and migration of uh, um, immune cells. Can increase endothelium protection, so very useful if you have hypertension and they are useful also if you suffer of coagulation problems. So let's talk about thymus a little bit. Thymus is a gland is a asymmetrical uneven gland that rests on the pericardium it's behind the sternum and in front of the big vessels that run in and out from the heart uh, thymus is very crucial for our immune health so from thymus uh, lymphocytes t lymphocytes uh, mature so if you don't have thymus, your, lymph, your, your T lymphocytes will not mature. As you probably know, there are two types of lymphocytes, T and B. B get mature in the bone marrow. T lymphocytes get mature in the thymus. During the aging process, from 40 years old onward, thymus start to decline its function. Thymus start to shrink start to substitute the functional tissue with collagen and with fat tissue so we can say that he's starting to become senescent and as we know we don't like senescent if you want to live in the best way possible if we want to age in the best way possible but which is the reason why while we age so during the aging process the time will start to shrink start to change the tissue simply for two reasons. The first is a hormonal one. So the more we age, the less our hormonal milieu. So the less our testosterone, the less our growth hormone, the less our melatonin. There is an alteration in the circadian rhythm and there is also a less way to maintain homeostasis about oxidative stress. So the more we age, the less our antioxidant efficiency, the less is our efficiency to respond against oxidative stress. And this is because our own capacity to produce our antioxidant is compromised. So there is more oxidative stress and there is also less capacity of this kind of cells in the thymus to proliferate, to differentiate, to heal themselves. And this is also because we don't have enough melatonin. And melatonin is very important to decrease oxidative stress and also to increase the vitality of, of the cells. And we have less growth hormone that is very important too for metabolism of these cells, proliferation, differentiation, and to also decrease the they also to transform the functional tissue of the thymus in collagen and adipose tissue. And so we started to age. So we started to have immune senescence. Our thymus doesn't work as before. We don't have enough lymphocyte CD4, CD8, uh, NK killer cells. We are not able anymore to respond against pathogens, virus, fungal infection, bacteria, and so on. And when we take a cold or a fever, it lasts longer because we have less immune cells. And here we are with thymic peptides, thymosin 1-alpha or thymulin, especially thymulin was discovered in 1977, actually also thymosin 1-alpha. Uh, these two peptides were discovered on the same year, 1977. So very long time ago and actually I don't understand why they never use it as first-line therapy against uh, infections or or stuff like this. They prefer the antibiotics and we know the side effects of antibiotics. Actually I don't know. Anyway, thymoline and thymosin 1-alpha have this capacity to reverse the aging process in the thymus 
to recreate the right pool of lymphocytes to increase proliferation, differentiation, migration in the site where infection is, they can have endothelium protective capacity, as I said before, anticoagulant capacity, so they can block antithrombin 3, and they can also decrease inflammation. They can decrease interleukin 6, especially in performance. They can decrease metalloproteinase 9 or MMP9. MMP9 is very high in chronic diseases, especially in Crohn's disease, uh, when there are some spots when there is inflammation in the gut, in the colon, you have high levels of MMP9. Higher level of MMP9 means more inflammation there, more catabolism of the tissue, so less MMP9 in some states, in this case in Crohn's disease, is very useful and protective and can speed up the recovery. I think that thymic peptides are probably one of the most important peptides in this period where endothelial dysfunction is in everybody. So everybody has endothelial dysfunction, both for insulin resistance due to overweight and obesity, but also for COVID infection. So COVID-19 infection or both vaccination can create this alteration in endothelium and increase the formation of blood clot. That's the reason why thymosine, thanks to its protective effect, both directly in the endothelium, decreasing oxidative stress, and its positive effects on coagulation factors, for example, antithrombin 3, plasminogen, and so on, can increase the health of endothelium and increase oxygenation of tissue, and can, of course, decrease oxidative stress, catabolism and uh, risk of pathologies. Going a little bit deeper about these peptides, thymoline is made of 9 amino acids, so it's very little. Thymosine 1-alpha is 28 amino acids. Both are peptides. Uh, thymoline is made of 3 more peptides. Thymogen are 2 amino acids peptides. Vylon are 2 amino acids peptides. And Christogen are 3 amino acids peptides. You can find thymoline or you can take all these three peptides separately to have the effect of these peptides. About the thymosine 1-alpha, um, they right now, if people have to use thymic peptides, they use thymosine 1-alpha, and they don't use thymoline, but probably because it's more available respect to the other one. Anyway, when you look into uh, the paper that they published time ago, you can find a good synergy with epithelon. You can find several in vivo studies in humans, of course, of epithelon and uh, thymoline. So the one of nine amino acids. Epithelin and thymoline together have a good effect to decrease acute respiratory infection, to increase lifespan and the well-being. If we want to go deeper into the topic, don't forget to buy my book, The Secret of Anti-Aging and Muscle Mass. Actually, in the book, you can find the dosage and how to treat it in base of your condition or pathology and stuff like that. So see you next time. We will talk about epithelium. Thank you so much for being here. See you next time.